Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 21st of the, oh, and this is a weekly one soon, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell. Is that tomorrow? Anyway, uh, of today's problem, uh, wait, what? 20, day 21 of December, uh, today's problem is 886 possible bipartition. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, we want to split a group of N people. I don't know why I'm saying it a little bit funny. So we want to split a group of N people into two groups of any size. Each person might may dislike some other people and they should not go in the same group. Come in the integer N and array dislikes. Okay, so basically you want... Ba I mean, the, you, instead of a friends graph, you have a dislike graph. Uh, that's what this one is saying. And the idea... I mean, this is... I think... The, I think the uh, the title is a little bit of a a, a, a lot of the, a giveaway. This is clearly a bipartition problem, uh, and what that mean and and just trying to see whether um, there's a this is a bipartite graph, right? And what is a bipartite graph? Uh, a bipartite graph is just a very fancy way of uh, <laughs> A very fancy way uh, of saying that a graph that is um, you can split into two halves, right? Uh, I think this was wasn't there something like wasn't this like a part of a Q four or something like this that was hard recently or something? Maybe I, I have enough code or something. I don't know. I feel like I've done some of bipartite graphs lately uh, uh, recently. But in any case, um, yeah. Um, and, and another way to say that you can uh, by partition a graph into into uh, two groups is of course saying that is too colorable. Um, and what 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 does that mean, right? Um, and it also um, comes up with respect to um, a graph that is not necessarily. Um, oh yeah, the 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 breakfast search one, but um, it doesn't have to be. Um, what was I going to say? Sorry. Guys. I'm a little, uh, just took a nap and a little bit off. But no, uh, what I mean is that, uh, yeah, just too colorful and it doesn't has to have to be uh, a connected graph. That's what the word I was looking for. Um, meaning that you can have, uh, it's not a forest, but um, basically you could have a disconnected graph with different components. And for each connected component, there's one, well, there are technically two ways to make it um, too colorable if it is too colorful, right? Meaning that, you know, it's the same color and then maybe the other, co the inverse of those colors. So, th th um, and the idea behind this really is pretty simple for two coloring. Um, three coloring is way too harder. Uh, and um, yeah, and in fact, so hard that I believe it's NP complete. It's one of the examples of uh, NP complete problems. So definitely, um, there's a lot of literature about all this stuff, and it's always good to read up on it if you're a nerd and uh, and, and like to just learn things. And I'm saying that this is a nerd. I love reading about it, uh, and I've read about all this stuff in the past and learned about this all in the past. So yeah, but that place uh, uh, a place for future learning if you, that's it what you're into. It. But for two color bow, it's very tractable, it's very solvable, and basically uh, the idea is just um, you could kind of even. I, I know that I've said a lot of graph uh, terms with, you know, uh, bipartite, two colorable and stuff like that. But really the core idea of buying, um, the say, the two color uh, algorithm is just um, greedy, right? And you could do this greedy in, in two different ways as well. Uh, one is by kind of... Um, with a stack of a queue, right? Uh, kind of a uh, depth first search or breadth first search. Um, and let me just kind of add a little bit of a visualization here. It's just that, um, let me set it up real quick. Do, 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 do. So my hair is pretty funky. I have some hat hair today. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but basically the idea really is just that, let's say you have some random graph. Uh, I'll, I'll use one of the examples. Um, so you have one, you have two, uh, I guess this is just a ring, right? Okay. Uh, but, okay, so fine, maybe this is a ring from one of the examples. Um, but then, you know, maybe I'll have a more complicated example. Uh, that is, 
you know, and this is what is a K3, which makes it, you know, uh, not possible. But the idea is that, oh, just give, give any, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you have, in a way, really works because everything is forced. And what I mean by forced is that you have no decision to make at any point, right? Um, the only thing you can do is, I guess, the initial decision, but it's not really, it doesn't matter. And what I mean by that is that, okay, let's just say we start at this note and we say, okay, this is color zero or color, uh, I guess a number is not a color, but you know what I mean. But um, let's just say this is, I don't know, yellow, right? Um, and then and then that means that every everything next to it has to be a different color, right? So if this is yellow, let's say the other color is, I don't know, green, right? So that means that by definition, these two have to be green. Uh, or not by definition, but by like, you know. And of course, here we have a contradiction in that we have the two greens next to each other, and then we know that that's not possible. But let's just say that, um, let's just say for fun, or at least like for one more iteration, yeah, what's going on? Uh, this doesn't exist. And then now we just take another thing and then be like, okay, well, this one, this node is next to these two greens, so it has to be yellow because there's no other color. We only have two colors, there's no choice. And the same thing with yellow here. And of course, like, eh, well, you know, this means that this these two yellows are sad, but that's basically the algorithm. There's really no, um, maybe you could say it's greedy, maybe you could say that everything is forced. I, I like to say that everything is forced in general for these kind of problems because it it, it shows you that you have no choice, right? If, if it's too colorable, then that's the only way that you can do it. I mean, you could use different colors, but but that's the general idea. Okay, so now with all that said, let's, uh, let's implement this then. Um, and of course, you have to do it for every uh, connected component, as I said earlier. Uh, so that's the only thing. I don't, I don't know if that this graph is, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that ev um, this entire graph is connected or not. Um, in general, um, it's a good assumption not to assume it. Well, it's good to not assume that, you know, um, the, but maybe it tells you, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, and I'm just looking for a coin again. I, I don't know, I guess I could just go back. Um, we'll see if I could do it recursively or with a queue. Um, so yeah, so let's say hmm, today's quarter is, uh, maybe I just reduce the same quarters. That's, I don't know. Huh, it's like a little flying turkey dragon thing. What the? Man, I really do not pay attention. To Louisiana. Huh. Can't really tell what this is. Hmm. Uh, if you're from Louisiana, let me know about what you think about your quarters. But okay, let's just flip it with its heads. I'll do it that for search. I dropped the coin. Ah, uh, whatever. All right, it's tails. I'm gonna do it with a Q. Um, okay. So yeah, let's let's get started. All right. Uh, let's end and then and this is a, a list of this is a, a an edge list. We want to convert this to an adjacency list. I keep on miss clicking this. Okay, right. oh, man, my typing is way poor today. Oh, Ninety-nine percent accuracy, not quite. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh so yeah, so now that we have a list, and then basically we just go to you know, um, there are a couple of ways you can do it. The way that I'm going, and honestly, or like specifically uh, implementation wise there's a couple of ways you can do it um or you could do it really any other way but uh, there are a couple of ways that i tend to think about doing it sometimes and um, sometimes i use more strict color rhetoric sometimes i don't but uh, but that, that's for the sake of learning let's do it right so um i, I think there is an uh, established convention but i always forget the convention so i'm just gonna start with um you know, let's set the colors, right? So we have gray, uh, black, and white, right? Let's just set them to zero, one, two, uh, right? And then now we have, uh, let's just say, uh, a colors array. Uh, oh, let's do it the American way, right? Um, oops, times n. All right, so now we have, we start them off with a gray color, and gray, uh, I guess, is a third color, but really is to denote that it is an it is, um, you know, it's between black and white. We haven't decided the color yet. That's basically the idea. And then now for i in range of n, we go if 
color supply is equal to gray then we color um we color i with say black it doesn't matter right i mean but uh, but that's the way that i structure it and here of course let me see um of course you can implement this recursively or um as i'm going to do with uh, a queue but yeah that's really up to you of course uh Oh, my, my watch is like mm, tight um okay yeah and then uh maybe we say something like if no because i mean there are a couple of ways you can do it but but let me just continue on this path right so basically uh yeah so duh, 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 we said uh colors of x is equal to c right um and yeah, and then while length of Q is greater than zero, we have to actually put in the Q, of course, uh, X, right? So, you know, uh, 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 this is just kidding. Duh, 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 duh. We pop it up to Q, and then now we look at all the edges for E in adjacency list of now, maybe that's a V. Uh, basically, if color sub V is equal to gray, then we now process it, right? Um, and what we want to say is that, as as we said before, um, yeah, if this is gray, then let's set it to, um, depending on what our current C is, right? So what if C is equal to black, we want to set it to white. Um, else we want to set it to black right because that's to be the other color that we use and then of course we append it to the queue right and then that's it that's pretty much it really and then now at the end um, you could do it in a number of ways maybe I could just do it this way I mean you could do it on the nodes you could do it on the nodes or you could do it on the dislikes it doesn't really matter but uh, but basically if um, colors of u is equal to colors of v that means that they're in the same color and that means that they're in the same group and that means that everyone is a little bit sad so then we can return false otherwise return true so yeah so this is a a, a greedy algorithm um and of course it'd be nice if i uh, what is this one index is that why i guess this is one index whoopsie eh. can we have to do it here too then Eh, this part is a little bit yucky, but eh, maybe I could have done it a little bit. Different. I mean, and maybe I could have just done it from V. Uh, okay, so yeah, <laughs> this is wrong. Why is this wrong? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, did I make a mistake? Is my color of nodes to red, right? One, two, two, two. Okay, one we color um, two and four, and then two we color four. Right? Oh, wait, what? Oh, I, I messed up here. Why did I use C? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I was still thinking about it recursively. Um, what, what C should be? This is not C. It should be colors of now um because this is the node that we're processing for some reason I, I was thinking about the recursive one so i was using c as a template uh, okay so that looks good easy fix did i take out the print statement i did not take out the print statement uh so let's submit it again uh this time without the print statement <laughs> uh yeah uh okay slightly faster but mm, i can still kind of slow yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Nine hundred ninety-five day streak. Nice. But yeah, what is the complexity of this, right? Um, this is going to be linear time, linear space, and of course, the linear in this case is going to be v plus y, um, where v is the number of vertices or number of people, and y is the number of edges, which is number of things in dislike. Um, we process this. This is. This is all of ye. Uh, this is all of we, obviously, in time and space. 
and this as well. Um, here, here, this one's a little bit more confusing to look at sometimes, but basically the summation of all the edges, uh, this is going to be all of Yi because for every Yi, it is only going to be uh, added once, right? So yeah, or it's going to be part of a for loop once for every Yi, maybe twice if you want to count the other side as a you know, bit, um, because, um, you know. But yeah, but this is O of Yi, uh, and this is also O of V because the Q can only contain O uh, at most V items, so this is actually O of V plus Yi. And of course, this loop is, doesn't do anything because, or like it's a summation of all those V plus Yi's because um, if this happened every time, that means that none of, you know, it only happens for each word text at most once because you only color each word text once, right? By by the uh, the depth, the con constraints that you set yourself. And of course, this is O of Yi. So yeah, so it's a total O of V plus Yi. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Um, stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.